Breaking headlines, ladies and gentlemen, the plot thickens at the Sunspot Observatory in New Mexico, the very bizarre closure. There have been dozens of conspiracies floating around the internet and the mainstream news. What I find very peculiar, and I, and I hope that this is not connected, but will you just look at it? Almogordo Daily News, hiker found dead on White Sands National Monument Trail. Now, where is the White Sands National Monument Trail? in conjunction with the Sunspot Astronomy and Visitor Center that was mysteriously closed for over a week. They are reopening it today, according to an article from Aura News. So you can see, as far as if you're going to drive from the observatory to the actual trailhead, the White Sands National Monument, it's going to take you a little bit over an hour. What I wonder is the person that they found on the trail, does this person have any connection to the Sunspot Observatory? Has this person been there recently? Or is this something non-related? Now, there have been people before that have been found dead on the White Sands Trail. Let me just go ahead and read this article, just a quick excerpt from the Almogordo Daily News. Hiker found dead on White Sands National Monument Trail. The New Mexico State Police continue their investigation of a man who died while hiking on a trail at White Sands National Monument Wednesday night, according to the National Parks Service press release. According to NPS release, while closing the White Sands National Monument, park rangers discovered an unattended vehicle at the Alcali Flat Trail parking lot. Then, after searching the immediate area, park rangers expanded their search where they discovered an unresponsive man about a half mile from the trailhead between 10 and 11 p.m. And I think they're referring to the Alcali Flat Trail. So when the New Mexico State Police responded, they confirmed that the man was dead upon their arrival. NPS is going to be coordinating with the NMSP, New Mexico State Patrol or State Police, I think, to investigate the incident. Currently, no other information is being released at the time due to the ongoing investigation. Now, the superintendent, Marie Frias Sauter, said rangers were closing WSNM and doing their normal sweep of the park. So if a car is parked in the area, it needs to have a reason for being there, Sauter said. For example, our backcountry campers, they need to have a permit on their dash and back in our backcountry camping trails, which they have their water and camping gear. The man's park, I mean, the man's car was parked at the Alcali Flat Trail. Our ranger who was on duty did a hasty search, Sauter said. They did a really quick check, then decided he couldn't see any more and went further to get some staff. At that point is when they discovered the hiker. Then back in 2015, there was reports of two French nationals that died while hiking the Alcali Flat Trail in the White Sands National Monument. The couple was actually hiking with their nine-year-old son, and their son did survive the incident. Um, she said she wants people to know that the, the White Sands are gorgeous, but they can also be deadly. People have to pay attention, Sauter said. They can be smitten with it. This is not my opinion of the hiker because I have no idea what he died of. It's completely still under investigation. We don't know why he died but it can be a deadly place. So the temperatures Wednesday during the day reached 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let me go to the next article that I want to share with you. That's, just, that's very unfortunate. And you, you definitely want to be prepared if you're going hiking in a situation like that, but they just don't give us any details. So we don't know what's going on. Now let me share with you the Association of Universities for Research and Astronomy, or AURA statement about the status of the Sunspot Solar Observatory at Sacramento Peak New Mexico, September 16th, 2018. On September 6th, the Association of Universities for Research and Astronomy, ORA, and the National Science Foundation made the decision to temporarily vacate the Sunspot Solar Observatory at Sacramento Peak, New Mexico, as a precautionary measure while addressing a security issue. The facility closed down in an orderly fashion and is now reopening. The residents that vacated their homes will be returning to the site and all employees will return to work this week. 
Aura has been cooperating with an ongoing law enforcement investigation of criminal activity that occurred at Sacramento Peak. During this time, we became concerned that a suspect in the investigation potentially posed a threat to the safety of local staff and residents. For this reason, Aura temporarily vacated the facility and ceased science activities at this location. This is one of the theories that I, one of the hypothesis scenarios that I gave when I first did the podcast about the closure of Sunspot. And my information was based upon an article that I read the year before where they said that they were doing tours for the eclipse, but then they were going to be closing down the facility soon after. And they were talking about how people were upset because there used to be a lot of jobs out there. And now everything's moving to Colorado. So I questioned that as saying, okay, well, maybe there was some type of threat, security threat. Now, one thing that I do find interesting is the smell that was reported in the buildings. I don't know if there was radiation there. I mean, I wasn't there. I didn't have my Geiger counter there. What is interesting, though, is that X-Files game that was thrown in the trash for anybody to see. And what is also interesting is how easy it was for people to roam the area freely, even though reports of sheriffs being there, checking out, and then just walking up. So could this be just a big, hey, look over here, look over here, we're going over there, that started via a security threat, and then the media picks up on it. And so now the MFers are going, yeah, let's just go with it so we can do what we need to do while everybody's looking over there. I have a friend, Doc Skinner, that's putting together the um, Disclosure Con next month, 5th, 6th, and 7th in Pine Top, Arizona. And he was even contacted by CNN and then after the fact, CNN said they wanted to talk to me. He said, okay. Then after the fact, CNN called him and said, no, we don't need to talk to you anymore because they're reopening the observatory. There's been reports that they shut it down because of fleets of UFOs being captured via iPhone and filter. Now, I don't think they're going to shut down that observatory because of a fleet of UFOs. Whether that picture is a picture of UFOs or it's an anomaly that was picked up because of the technology of the camera and the actual sun and all the conditions, atmospheric conditions, etc. I don't think it was shut down because they discovered Planet X. Now, there's been reports of mercury leaks. There's been reports of they shut it down because China was using it to spy on the White Sands military. Well, China, ladies and gentlemen, is a very powerful force in technology. Most of our um, electronics come from China. Think about how many microchips they found in the past that were considered faulty that were put in very sensitive data centers, very sensitive, that these chips were designed to send information back to the makers of the chips, like a backdoor, or not necessarily the maker of the chips, but those that have access to the codes of those that made the chips for the back door. So in my opinion, and I don't know if I, if I believe that story, but I think that that would make more sense than, oh, they found Planet X. So they shut it down. They shut the, the post office down. They tell everybody to leave and then say, okay, yeah, you can come back in a few days. Security, security. Think about this for a minute. You have uh, a town that's got about 15 people living in the town full-time, working out there. And then, all of a sudden, FBI shows up, or they say they're the FBI. They've got, you know, they've got these mobile antennas. They've got Black Hawk helicopters. I mean, it could be another organization saying they're the FBI. Or it could be the FBI. If it was the FBI, do you think the FBI is going to be um, investigating a UFO or a Planet X situation or a chemical spill? Or do you think Homeland Security would be doing that? Or do you think that there would be government agencies doing that, no-name government agencies, I mean, let's think about the national security measures. If, if you spot a fleet of UFOs and you run an observatory that's c connected to a university that might have other ties and you spot this and then you tell everybody in the town what happened and then you go and, and you want to send this information. I don't think you're going to send it in the mail. You might, I mean, you'd be a lot quicker just putting it in the blog saying, look at this. But does that make sense to you? They, they, they spot these UFOs. See, this, this picture that was taken via iPhone 8, and it does. It's a great picture. It looks like a bunch of these giant sperm UFOs 
that are either going into a, into the sun or coming out of the sun. Hello. I mean, that's what it looks like. But it could be a, a, some type of electronic interference anomaly combined with the technologies, and it could be spaceships. Although if she can take a picture like that with her iPhone, you would think if anybody else had that equipment at the right time or a decent camera, they could do the same thing. They would just have to know when to take the picture. Now, I've seen plenty of videos of what looks like a second sun, what looks like Planet X. You know, with the, with the welding lenses and stuff like that. And they're like, look, you can see it with the welding lens and you can't without it. And then you can actually prove that what you're seeing with the welding lens that looks like a second sun is not. It's just a reflection from the welding lens. And it can be extremely convincing, and that's Planet X or a binary star. So I just look at all the possibilities, folks, and I don't claim to have the answers. So for those of you out there that were giving me a hard time saying, oh, you're jumping all over the place and, and, and quit giving your opinions and, and don't give us your opinions unless you have the facts, well, don't watch. Plain and simple. If you don't have the answers, then you have to find the answers. How do you find the answers? By thinking, by thinking outside the box, by asking other people their opinions, by getting information and data. I mean, if you can find the actual people that were there, if you can get the actual information there, that's great. But if nobody's talking, then what do you do? You have to compile a hypothesis by asking questions. I make it very clear these are my opinions. This is hypothesis. This is theory. This is not fact. I share with you the articles that I have found to read to present to you the information. It's for you to decide. And on that note, I've got an interview to get ready for here in about 45 minutes. I'm going to be talking to a wonderful guest about the markets right now from Noble Gold Investments. Have you been keeping track of the stock market? It's insane. And Russia just bought, I think, over 100 tons of gold because they're trying to weaken the U.S. dollar. Iran, China, Russia... They're trying to join, you know, join forces so they won't accept or they won't use our petro fiat dollar anymore as a way to pay for stuff. Like they won't let us, oh yeah, let's just buy it all with all our petro dollars. What are you going to do, sucker? Well, they want to make their own inter international monetary fund type system. So the markets are very volatile right now, in my opinion. And if you know the right time to get in and you know the right time to get out, if you've got people that are experts and do it for a living, that eat, drink, sleep, and research the financial markets, gold and silver, if you want to get into gold and silver, there's a really good opportunity with Noble Gold Investments. So definitely click the links. You can get free books, free material just for being a Leak Project listener. And if anything, just read the books because it's amazing how inflation and banks are designed to keep you in the rat race. It's unbelievable. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for your support. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see.